Hello, everybody. Tracy, Mrs. J Dog Flanagan with you here today. I'm the co founder and sen senior vice president here at J Dog Brands. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast, powered by Vet TV and J Dog. Our podcast gives veterans, male spouses, active military members, and military family members a voice in the veteran space to speak about their service, how they're affecting their communities post service. And they share with me a tactical treasure that has helped them along their journey in their military career, business, or life. Today, I have the uh, wonderful pleasure of speaking with Erica Andreessen. CBCP JD MPA is an Army veteran, author, professor, and has nearly two decades of experience as a lawyer in both the corporate finance world and the military. Having joined the Army in 2012 and serving for more for over eight years in the JAG Corps, Erica became a subject matter expert on national security and disaster preparedness and response while advising different commands on their authorities and during high risk situations in a Afghanistan. After transitioning out of the Army in 2020, Erica founded EAAS Consulting, where she leverages her extensive experience in both the military and corporate world to advise and counsel companies and clients to secure a plan, survive disasters, and thrive in the aftermath. Hi, Erica. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. How do your listeners? Oh, I'm yes. doing well. How are you? Good. Great. So could you talk to us a little bit about your military career? What inspired you to go into the Army? Okay, so I was a corporate lawyer to start. Um, not something I actually really wanted to do. It's something I fell into because the thing I really wanted to do was a glamour industry didn't pay much. And I had student loans and I <laughs> had moved back home for law school and I didn't want to live back home for much longer. But this was in the um, mid 2000s. And I was helping the big banking institutions that caused the world economy to collapse in 2008 defend themselves against uh, investigations. Oh, wow. And that was not very fulfilling. And at yeah. the same time, I wound up doing some pro bono work for veterans. I became a VA accredited attorney and I was helping veterans who had their claims denied by the VA fight it. And that was the first time I really felt that my law degree was being used for something good. And yeah. I wanted to do something more like that. I wanted to help veterans. And it just felt dirty to charge them. So the next best thing was to join them and be one of them. So I had a buddy at the time who had been inviting me to a lot of USO events. He was a former sergeant in the military. And I was like, you know, everybody, can you get me in touch with some JAG recruiters? He said, sure. So um, within two years later, I was, you know, swearing in as a commissioned officer in the JAG Corps. Wow. How exciting. So can you talk to me a little bit about um, the JAG Corps specifically? What was it like uh, being a lawyer in the military? It was very different from everything I've ever done as a civilian lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually really liked everything I was doing. And it was very broad in experience. The JAG Corps likes to build what they call broadly skilled judge advocates, because the idea being pretty much with every other branch in the military, it is plug and play. So if one person can't do the job for some reason they can plug in another person and it's fine so we we all have a taste of something and i got first my experience with what i was super happy with uh, the section called legal assistance and that's basically legal aid for soldiers so we would help them with um, disputes with their landlords we would help them with some type of small claim stuff we would give them advice on family law or divorce or marriage we would also help them with administrative actions against them. So that was like really fulfilling for me. And then I went into claims and then I went into being a trial counsel, which when most people who are not in the JAG or know anything about the JAG, it's what they know from the movies, you know, when you do the court martial. Right. And then um, wound up doing, I had a, I was given an ancillary duty actually, um, where because I had been a quote unquote real lawyer before I joined the JAG Corps, when we had a PCS season of we lost eight JAGs, one move, and we only got four to replace them. Oh, wow. So there was a lot of stuff that was not taken care of. And they go, Erica, you're going to take three of the jobs. I was like, okay, great, thanks. And they go, don't <laughs> worry, one of them, which is the Emergency Operations Center legal advisor, is literally just showing up to one meeting a quarter. It's nothing. And then 
that's not what happened at all. Within two weeks, there was a natural disaster outside of Fort Leonard Wood and also Fort Leonard Wood, where I was stationed at the time. So that's where I got my introduction to emergency management. But um, and then after that, every single job I had in the JAG Corps dealt with operational and domestic operations, disasters and whatnot. So it was really a great place to build upon the passion I discovered, which also caused me to get my um, master's of public administration, my MPA degree, which is basically the government equivalent or the nonprofit equivalent of an MBA. And then, um, yeah, th- I can go on and on about the Jack <laughs> or I can. All right. So yeah. I, so I imagine that just that experience alone was very impactful for you being a part of the JAG Corps. Um, yes. Is there one area that um, that meant a lot to you or that, that you really, that stood out to you? Um, I think there's an overarching theme that I was making an impact and helping the greater good, regardless of what position I held in the Jack Force. So if I said legal assistance, I was helping the individual soldier and they absolutely deserved the, the legal assistance they were getting, the, the right. help they were getting, they were getting screwed over by, um, the unscrupulous, property managers who were renting out to them and trying to take advantage of them and yeah. trying to keep their security deposit because, you know, a $400 security deposit to an E2 is massive to sure. hold on to. And I get that back for them. Um, when I was doing trial counsel work, I was helping with good order and discipline and making sure that victims are taken care of and that everybody was in line as they needed to be. Um, when I was doing operational law, domestic operations, national security law, I was helping in, in a much bigger, impactful way. So um, it's always been about impact. And, it, and it's something that I could not get from a legal job in the civilian world. It was just completely different. Sure. And I, I'm just so incredibly proud of the service I did and was able to have an impact on throughout everywhere that I worked. And um, yeah, it's just it's, it was a really great experience for a lot of reasons. Yeah, sounds like it. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast. We are currently speaking with Erica Andreessen, who is an Army veteran, having served eight years in the JAG Corps. She is also an author, professor, and has nearly two decades of experience as a lawyer obviously in both the corporate finance world and the military. Um, She is also the founder of EAAS Consulting, where she leverages extensive experience in both the military and corporate world to advise and counsel companies and clients to secure a plan, survive disasters, and thrive in the aftermath. And she's followed this up and written an amazing book called How to Not Kill Your Business, which is a conversational introduction to business continuity enjoyed by CBCP practitioners and business owners alike. How to Not Kill Your Business will walk you through the basics of business continuity so that you can learn what you need to do to secure your assets with a plan, survive disasters and disruptions, and thrive in the aftermath. How to Not Kill Your Business can be purchased on Amazon in both Kindle and physical form. However, if you would like a one-stop shop where you can find out more about Erica and EAAS Consulting, she has a website, EAASC.com. You can read about her, about the services that she offers with her consulting firm, and also you can click on links to purchase her book. Now back to the podcast. Post-service, you founded EAAS Consulting. Um, Could you talk to me about the work that you're doing there? Yeah, I um, basically help business owners not kill their businesses by (laughs) making mistakes that they don't know that they're making. So I was, it was when I was in Afghanistan, I had the idea for the business. I was finishing up my MPA in my very, 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 very few uh, spare, uh, spare minutes here and there. And I was reading a business review article on businesses that had suffered through Superstorm Sandy. And they're all asked the same question. And the final question being, what are you doing to prepare for the next disaster? And mm-hmm. almost every single one of them said, oh, this isn't going to happen again. 
And I was like, oh, you're so wrong. Yeah. And things I'd been doing at work, aside from, I mean, the main job I had as the operational attorney to the general in the uh, command, the Joint Command Operations Center, was to approve every bomb we dropped. And the other thing that I was doing was sitting in all the, the risk management meetings or every time we went outside the wire to go do some kind of engagement with leaders. And part of that was what is the most likely, what is the least likely and most deadly course of action? I was like, you know, every business should be doing this, being some, being prepared for these types of things. Sure. So when I had the idea for this business, again, it was 2016, I wasn't out yet and I wasn't about to get out. So I had to sit on it for a little bit. And the main reason I decided to get out, I was approaching 40 uh, when I started thinking about it. And I'd been moving around a lot every like two, three years. And it's harder as a single person to reestablish a whole new life every time you move yeah. when you're by yourself. Um, so I was like, you know, I wanted more control over my life. And that's, that's really well and truly the reason I wanted to leave. Um, it, was, it was a real hard decision to make because I was still very passionate about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So I put in my paperwork in January 2020 because you need a minimum of six months in advance. Did not know a pandemic was coming. Oh, and um, All right. Yeah, kind of was disappointed that I was like late to the party. And <laughs> someone, a friend of mine who was, uh, he was the aide to camp to the general I was advising at that time. And he's like, Erica, you do realize that you are your product, right? You and your knowledge and your expertise and your experience. And I went, huh. Yeah, you're right, which actually inspired the name. You know, EAS is a play on software as a service, but it's Erica as a service. So I endeavor to help business owners know, I educate them about business continuity, which in the military, they call continuity of operations. It's the same thing. Every soldier, airman or Marine or, you know, um, seaman, they all know what this is because they do it every day because the military is a 24-hour international, basically, a corporation that needs to be running all the time. And if one part right. fails, then it's mission critical and potentially the mission fails. And that's the same thing for any type of business. Now, major corporations and international corporations do this already. It's just the mid- mid-sized and smaller businesses that don't. Some of them know what it is, but it's it's not something that they really thought they need. And others don't even know what it is at all. And it's like, you know, you think you have your sales dialed in, you think you have your marketing dialed in, but really, what you really need to know is when you do risk management, you're only mitigating your risk, you're not eradicating. So there's still a chance for failure and business continuity picks up where um, risk management fails. Wow. That's, that's really interesting. Um, I, yeah, I love the, I love the name. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> um, so Yes, and you wrote a, a book, How Not to Kill Your Business. So that is really amazing. Um, so where can people purchase your book? It's on Amazon. Oh, okay, great, great. And how or long you can is link it? it yeah, off my website, there's a, a link to the book that will bring you to the Amazon oh, site okay. as well. So how, how long has it been out? Um, it came out on September 29th, so okay. coming up on a year. It has been out. Okay, great. Great. I love it. Um, let's dive into your tactical treasure. Uh, okay. What would you like to share with us today? So one of the things I was told from one of the leaders, and I've heard this repeated multiple times when I was in the JAG Corps, is it's not the, the, the duty assignment or the job, it's the people. And it was really about specifically within the Jack with the people in your office and the, and the friendships and the relationships you make within the office. And I don't necessarily know why they, they felt that it needed to be limited to that. I always saw it's like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to explore everything outside of our Jack corner. So I would go to other sections. And I think it was, I had this curiosity because I come from a completely different world. Now, most Jags come from straight from law school into the JAG OBC, and then they're part of the military. And I had the experience of being a corporate lawyer before that. So I really just wanted to know how everything worked together. So I would go over and talk to all the other sections of the division or whatever it is I worked in. And I'm like, what do, what do you do? How does this work? Because I always felt that if I knew the broader picture, it would make me a better advocate and make me a better JAG in doing my job. And 
it did in a lot of ways. You know, if I had uh, an assignment and I needed to get an answer that I didn't know, it was really easy for me to walk down the hall because they already knew me. And I'd be like, hey, they're like, hey, what's up? I have a question. They would give me the answer really quickly, great for collaboration. And that's part of, too, like um, when I was doing the first time I was doing uh, an inject, I was writing injects for exercises. I just stuck to myself. I'm like, oh, I'll write this great legal inject and see what happens. And what wound up happening is almost every single one of my injects got missed. I was like, well, they failed. No, I failed. I failed because I realized my legal stuff did not happen in a vacuum. It happened with other stuff going on. So the next time I had to write something for an exercise, I went to the other sections and said, okay, hey, how does this work? How does this, does this ever come up in something you're familiar with? And I'm like, yeah, it actually does. So I would collaborate with them. And that's, you know, I took that with me when I started my business because an integral part of business continuity planning is having every section do their own evaluation and then crosstalk. Because you may think that this one operation is not important at all to your section. And that could be true. It could be like number five on a list of eight things that's of importance. But to somebody else, in order for their number one thing to work, that needs to work too. And it's when you do that um, collaboration and crosstalk where you're learning about everybody else and what they do, that you see where you fit better and you help everybody else be better. Yeah, that's a, that's great. Great treasure, great mantra. Um, we we call it brainstorming here at uh, JDOG. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we do a lot of that here. And there's a lot of uh, all of our departments somehow, some way interact and connect with one another. And, you know, again, it's all about teamwork that makes, you know, everything runs more smoothly and uh, can launch, I think, take a company to be very successful. You know, communication is key. So exactly. And we talk about, um, or somebody recently said, like, you know, everyone talked about stove piping. And that's very common in the military is your stove piping. You're like, no, no, this is mine. This is my section. Don't worry right. about that. And everyone's like, oh, stay in your lane. This is your thing. But sometimes that's not the best way. And they talk about breaking down um, these stovepipes, breaking down these barriers. Somebody else recently said to me, it's like, no, we don't break them down. You want to make them porous because there's still the pride involved in your section and your work, but you're still allowed to talk to other people and collaborate with other people. So right. having porous boundaries as opposed to strict, you know, this is my thing. Get away from me. Like it's mine. It's mine. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Veterans, military family members, if you're looking for an incredible opportunity, I would encourage you to check out jdogbrands.com. If you're interested in business ownership, if you're missing what was the best thing about your military service, being the camaraderie of fellow veterans, JDOG is a place for you. If you go to jdogbrands.com, you can find out everything about JDOG, including how to apply for franchise opportunities in either JDOG Junk Removal and Hauling or our new division, Carpet Cleaning and Floor Care. And if you're looking to just be employed by JDOG, we have over 300 locations, close to 100 15 franchise owners, 90% veteran owned. You can go to the career page and fill out the form and see where we're hiring all across the country. And we connect, connect you with your local JDOG in your territory. So check us out, jdogbrands.com. What advice would you give to your fellow veterans who are, who are struggling post-service? Um, you yourself, you kind of already had an idea of what you were going to do when you got out, but um, some are not that, you know, on the ball as to what their next step is going to be. Um, what, what advice would you have for them? Well, I'm going to blow you away with my answer because I did not know what I was doing when I got out. Um, oh. And the fact that I am where I am is, is good. I think this will be a good lesson or a good inspiration. I was getting out for a job, in addition to wanting to have control of my life. And when the pandemic hit, I was like, wait a minute, is this job still going to happen? And oh. when I reached out to the person who was giving me this job, they pretty much pulled a new phone who this. And I was like, are you kidding me? 
So I left the active duty unemployed. And that was um, a real shock to my system. It was the first time in my life I was unemployed. Oh, People no. were like, yeah, but you're a lawyer. How are you unemployed? I'm like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Like this, it was not a good time. Plus, right. on top of all that, and this is, I think, going to resonate with some veterans too who are transitioning. I also was, because of COVID, they were not doing the examinations for the, the BDD. So your, your, um, your benefits upon discharge. Yeah. And part of it was mental health. And they were like, no, we're not doing any of these right now. I'm like, no, 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 no. You need to talk to me. You need to get my evaluation done so I can right. get help for what I need help for. And they're like, yeah, no, like we're not seeing people. I said, but you could talk to me. You don't need to a mental health evaluation in person. You could do it over the phone. They're like, no, we're not. So I was really, really distraught. I was triggered by a lot of stuff. So when oh, I wow. got out unemployed, that just, you know, compounded the, the level of distraught I felt. Oh, and wow. I wound up having, uh, I called, this is actually a terrible part of the story. I was freaking out, like crying every day before I was getting out. I had like a week left of active duty and I was calling the veterans, um, the VA. And I was like, you have to do something. First, the VBA, because there's a difference between the v- VBA and the VA. Uh-huh. And the VBA is like, well, we can't do anything for you. You're still on active duty. Call your MTF. I said, sure. So I called mental health at my MTF. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to help you. I said, why not? They said, because you're only on active for another week. There's no point because we can't follow up. And I'm <sighs> like, that's messed up. And they said, well, oh my gosh. call the VA. That's so I horrible. called the VA and the local VA to me. And they're like, well, we'd love to help you, but you're still on active duty. And I just broke <sighs> down, hysterical crying on the phone. And the lady's like, do me a favor. Can you just go to the ER at the VA and ask for a psychiatry to help you? And I said, okay. And I went. And they were so great because they were like, hey, don't worry about the paperwork. We'll take care of you. You you are important, not the paperwork. Don't worry about it. And they saw me. They saw me a social worker who actually kicked somebody's butt to get me seen for my um, my, my BDD evaluation for my mental health within oh, a wow. week. And then I had my, my disability rating, and that was great. And I was still kind of figuring out what it is I needed to do or wanted to do because I kept applying for a legal job because it made sense. Right. But it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my own company. I wanted to help businesses. And then it was through a series of me not even getting interviews. But I'm like, okay, the universe is talking to me and they're preventing this from happening. Right. So let me actually start making moves to do the thing I actually really want to do. And then that's where everything started changing. Right. Yeah. What a terrible experience um, for you when you were trying to get help. And uh, uh, that's so sad to hear because I think you're not the only one that experiences um, the breakdown of the system that is supposed to support our veterans and and help them. Um, especially yeah, it was just a bad time because of COVID. Problems. And not only were they not seeing people, when they were seeing people, they were overloaded with people who had been depressed from being locked up sure. and, uh, you know, in their homes and not interacting with people. So. Right. When I finally did get to do a PTSD assessment, they're like, okay, we can start your treatment at eight weeks. I said, that's unacceptable. And they're like, well, you know, here are your options. You can either go to this clinic or this clinic. I go, I don't care. You need to give me one of the two. Whoever responds first, I'll go to. I was like, you know, honestly, 22 people a day kill themselves. Like, I am begging you for help and you're not helping me. So, you know, within like a right. week, I was able to, one of the clinics responded. So I was able to get help. Um, pretty quickly. Unfortunately, the day I was supposed to start my PTSD therapy, my father died unexpectedly that morning. So like, oh, like there was a whole bunch of terrible stuff that happened oh, no. in my life How in the awful. first like two months of me being out of uh, active duty. Era. But, you know, everything was the way it needed to be because if I actually had a job, I wouldn't have been able to do my PTSD therapy. Right. If I had a job, I wouldn't have been able to take care of my mom and do the estate for her. You know, again, I'm a lawyer. Right. And make sure she was okay after my dad died. Sure. And then if I had a job, then I wouldn't have been able to follow my dream and my purpose of having my own business to help other businesses. Right. So, right. Yeah. It all works out. It all works out eventually. But wow, little storm you had to go through getting to where you were. But, um, oh, wow. Um, so it's been wonderful speaking with you and thank you so much for for coming on and sharing your story with us today and 
Um, I think it'll be motivating and inspiring to your fellow veterans, um, everything that you shared. Um, so if people want to find out more about you, your business, your book, um, is there a one-stop shop where they can go and, you know, connect with you and purchase your book and see about your services? Yes. So my website would be the, the best one-stop shop because it even links to my social media. There's links off the website to get the book and it tells you about me and my services. So that is www.eaasc.com because somebody else already got EAS before I got it. So <laughs> eaasc.com for EAS Consulting. Got it. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, we'll be sure to uh, get that out there to the masses your website. So thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast. We just finished up a wonderful conversation with Erica Andreessen, who is an Army veteran, having served for over eight years in the JAG Corps. After transitioning out of the Army in 2020, Erica founded EAAS Consulting. There, she leverages her extensive experience in both the military and corporate world to advise and counsel companies. And she even authored a book called How to Not Kill Your Business, which is a conversational introduction to business continuity enjoyed by CBCP practitioners and business owners alike. How to Not Kill Your Business will walk you through the basics of business continuity so that you can learn what you need to do to secure your assets with a plan, survive disasters and disruptions, and thrive in the aftermath. How to Not Kill Your Business can be purchased on Amazon in both Kindle and physical form. And you can also check out her website, eaasc.com, which is a one-stop shop where you can Take a look at everything that she is doing post-service. You can purchase her book and you can connect with her personally. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget, Tactical Treasures Podcast is on all your favorite podcast platforms as well as Vet TV. We are now airing on Reese Across America Radio on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern and Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can also find Reese Across America Radio on the iHeartRadio app, the Odyssey app, and the TuneIn app. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on another Tactical Treasures podcast. Bye-bye now.